This video is brought to you by Squarespace. For all of your website needs, Squarespace is the place to go. When you cut through the noise and get to the signal, you could say that Fujifilm's just announced GFX 100S is a pared down, ergonomically more compelling GFX 100 with the same 102 megapixel sensor, phase detect autofocus, 400 megapixel pixel shifting mode of the original, along with the shrunken IBIS and shutter system, and a new film simulation they call Classic Neg, but I call Stephen Shore. With, on the other hand, a lower resolution, lower magnification, non-tiltable EVF, but without the integrated, what were they thinking, vertical grip, for a whopping $4,000 less. Wow. Or, you could say that the GFX100 is a pared down and pumped up ergonomically more compelling GFX50S with twice the megapixels and IBIS and phase detect autofocus that the GFX50S doesn't have, all without the GFX50S's big butt for just $500 more. Oh, baby. But the real eye-opener is when you realize that Fujifilm has just delivered a fractionally smaller, lighter, 102 megapixel, medium format Panasonic Lumix S1R. It even looks like an S1R. With phase detect autofocus that the S1R doesn't have for the same price as a Leica SL2. Holy <laughs> Then again, so what? Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I'm going to be very brief because for the second or third time in as many months, I'm exceptionally clear about what it is I'm seeing. And because, rather than taking the time to rehash what I've learned previously, going hands-on with the GFX 100 and 50S, I'll simply put links to my reviews of both down in the video description below. So you can peruse them at your own leisure. Other than to say, actually, that these cameras and the best lenses for them, we'll talk about the lenses, hold that thought, produce images, colors, tonality, and pop that are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Well, maybe I will show you an excerpt or two, beginning with my first experience using the OG $10,000 GFX100 just about a year ago, is that possible? Like this. think that you would see a medium format camera with a wireless mic and headphones coming out of it. All right, hold up for a second. I played volleyball, soccer. I mean, anything athletic, really, I'm into. Here's the thing. Fujifilm has figured out one. As I mentioned a moment ago, how to shrink their IBIS and shutter assemblies even eke out an extra half stop of image stabilization compared to the original GFX100. Two, how to create, maybe, the most ergonomically compelling and strikingly designed camera in their history. 
Three, where to prudently cut corners without compromising on image quality. And four, how to price the result to alter just about everyone's perception of what they ought to demand from their current favorite brands, full frame or medium format, or if they really need either and can happily make do for less, less weight, size, and cost. These are all hallmarks of a company with ambition, skill, momentum, money, and the will to use it. Before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to Squarespace for making this episode possible. There's a reason why I've used Squarespace for more than five years now, and why I always recommend it to anyone looking for a beautiful, powerful, and performant, easy-to-use and cost-effective web presence, as in pretty much everybody. It just plain works, no website administrator or programmers needed. And it is so fully featured, without being overwhelming, that it can quickly and easily grow with you as your business needs evolve. Elegant design templates, custom domain names, e-commerce appointment setting, shipping and email integrations, plus SEO, social media, and analytics, Squarespace really does have it all. And we use it all. So if you're thinking about creating or refining your online presence, check them out at www.squarespace.com hue for a free, no credit card needed trial. And if you decide to move forward, save 10% at checkout by using the discount code hue. Thanks, Squarespace. Let's take these things in reverse order. At $6,000, again, as I said a moment ago, the GFX 100S has the same price as my own Leica full-frame 47.3 megapixel SL2. It's $400 less than Hasselblad's newest medium format camera, the 50 megapixel 907X50C, which I like very much, and that camera has neither IBIS nor an EVF. Never mind the $13,000 less it costs than Leica's new medium format 64 megapixel S3, which like the Hasse, has neither IBIS nor an EVF, though it does have an absolutely huge, gorgeous prism viewfinder. On the other hand, okay, the GFX 100S is $2,000 more than Canon's 45 megapixel R5, $2,300 more than the Panasonic's 47 megapixel S1R, $2,500 more than Sony's 61 megapixel A7R4, and $2,900 more than Nikon's 45 megapixel Z7 II. It's got way more megapixels than any of them, four times the megapixels of the APS-C X-T4 at almost four times the price, the phase detect autofocus that the Panasonic Leicas and Hasselblads don't, the ergos the Sony doesn't, the articulating screen the SL2 doesn't, and an absence of heat issues for which Canon can only wish. At least, in theory. I'll have to wait until I have one in hand to confirm this last point. The flip side is that in order to deliver all of this in the GX100S package with uncompromised image quality, Fujifilm do forego the maximum burst rates, higher video frame rates at 4K, lens catalog breadth and depth of the full-frame cameras, the super high-resolution EVFs in the Panasonic Leica Canon, and Sony, ultimate autofocus performance of the Sony and the Canon in particular, heritage, build quality, ergos, and best-in-class menu systems of the Leicas and Hassies three-way rear LCD panel of the GFX100, the tiltable EVF of the GX150S, which I do wish they'd left as an option, and, well, not that much else, at least for 99% of us, 99% of the time. Although, yeah, for six large, one would hope they'd finally sort the fiddly secondary controls. They have, in fact, upgraded the joystick thumb nubbin but this is another aspect of the camera I'll have to wait to assess until I have one in hand. What Fujifilm also haven't compromised on are their lenses. The 110mm f2 is incredible. Full stop. I love their 23mm f4. It is, to my eye, in actual use, optically faultless yet full of character because of its medium format field of view at the focal length. Call it the equivalent of a full-frame 18mm f3.2, absent the same level of perspective distortion. In either case, capable of images like these.
To my surprise, I found their GF45-100 F4 zoom convincing too. It renders beautifully and is surprisingly maneuverable, allowing me to capture images like these. What these lenses have in common is an uncommon level of resolution and freedom from distortion and aberration with excellent build quality, on par with some of the best glass in the full-frame world today, but with coverage that allows that level of precision to be transmitted to a larger surface for that slightly different look, which I do in fact prefer. Along with the GFX100S, Fujifilm also announced this morning an 80mm f1.7, a full-frame equivalent of a 63mm f1.4 for $2,500. Pretty interesting to me personally, as I am all hot and bothered by Sigma's 65mm f2 for my SL2, though the Sigma, at 700 bucks and 405 grams, is less than one-third the price and about half the weight of the new 80. Hold that thought. Anyway, finally, Fujifilm is clearly, quickly, developing a competency in shrinking its componentry and has more experience than anyone with sensors like this Although it does make you wonder, will, and if so, when and where will this sensor show up in other cameras? Let's wrap this up for now this way. Fujifilm have shown real strategic vision by staking out segments of the market they can dominate. They've shown a willingness to invest. They offer real value and with this camera's smaller footprint, lighter weight, medium format look, and relatively aggressive lens pricing, at least compared to its medium format brethren. We're talking half, sometimes not even half, for the glass compared to Leica and Hasselblad. Fujifilm will now put more pressure on both, as well as L-Mount Alliance partner Panasonic. If Fujifilm maintained this trajectory, they could conceivably put pressure even on Sony and Canon for anything other than sports or wildlife. What would happen if now... Right now, for example, Fujifilm decided to drop the 50R altogether to focus on the GFX50S and cut its price by, say, 1500 bucks. 
This would place the 50S a stone's throw from Canon's R5, not much farther from the 61 megapixel Sony a7R4. Offer some promotion lens pricing when bought with a body, and who knows how many people they could sway to medium format. Whether this would be economic for the company, I don't know. But if it were, holy cow, that sure would validate Fujifilm's strategy of staying out of the full-frame fray, attacking the market instead from above and below. that this kind of pricing might also sway a few folks thinking of moving up from APS-C or Micro Four Thirds directly to medium format to look more carefully instead at the under-recognized full-frame high-resolution Nikon Z7 II at basically half the price of the GFX 100S with already more megapixels than most people need and with better ergonomics, maybe better autofocus, deeper lens catalog with wonderful smaller, lighter, faster full-frame primes, for significantly less than, and a couple of stellar Holy Trinity zooms for about the same price as their GF lens equivalents, and as good or better build quality, the Z7 II might suddenly seem like a real bargain, which it pretty much is in the full frame space already, at least in my book. This is really the point of departure for answering the question I asked at the outset. So what if we have a 102 megapixel larger than full frame sensor crammed into a full frame body with the mod cons, as the Brits might say, in particular IBIS and phase detect autofocus, that make it easier to realize the full potential of those megapixels? Because unless you absolutely need all of those megapixels, the GFX 100S, for all of its technical wowness, that somehow strikes me as a more appropriate non-word word than prowess is still at the system level. That is, including lenses bigger, heavier, and more expensive than most full-frame systems, and slower. You would be very hard-pressed to see the difference in resolution, field of view for field of view, especially looking only at prints and not pixel peeping between the GFX 100S and a Sony A7R4, Canon R5, Nikon Z7 II, Panasonic S1R, or Leica SL2. If you are so constituted, however, you will see and appreciate the more flattering look of the GFX 100S's longer focal length lenses for a given field of view when photographing people, even if it's larger than full frame sensor, is significantly smaller than the 6x6, 2.25 square area of classic medium format cameras like the Raleigh Flex and Hasselblad 500CM. Most fascinating answer of all to the question of so what is the potential that with resolution this high in a body this small, relatively speaking, you simply wouldn't need as many lenses. Meaning you wouldn't actually need to spend that additional money or carry that additional weight. The notion and reputation of digital zoom might be utterly transformed, as would the difference in total systems cost between digital medium format and digital full frame. A single GF 45mm f2.8, if it were that good, just might be able to serve not only as the full frame equivalent of a 35, but a 50, a 90, maybe a 135, maybe even 200, simply by punching in. Maybe. At which point, it would be at least $3,000 less dear than my SL2 Apo SL35 kit with even more flexibility. Wouldn't that be a kick in the teeth? Am I selling my Leica SL2? No, I'm already using the 47 megapixels of the SL2 to extend my Apo Summicron 35 into a 50 when I want it, my Sigma 85 1.4 into a 135 when I need it, and this is awesome. Even if every now and again I think phase detect autofocus would be nice. As for the rest of us, well, these are still earliest days for the camera. A few too many ifs, a couple of implications too many about the 100S for me to sort through without going hands-on. If the GF lens line really is that good, could stand that kind of scrutiny, wouldn't we also want an EVF with resolution so high and magnification so great that we could punch in through it without seeing the image fall apart? I know, 
I would. Feel in hand? Secondary controls? I wonder. Are five and a half or six stops of image stabilization sufficient when one punch isn't that far? I don't know. Are the autofocus motors of its larger medium format lenses fast enough, or do they give away too much to smaller, nimbler, full-frame systems? TBD, to be determined. But do I believe you or I could have great fun with a GFX 100S and a few lenses, even with a single lens? Could we get absolutely stellar image quality, every bit as good as, sometimes better than, what you or I could get with an SL2? Would we have higher autofocus hit rates in low light or low contrast situations? For a total cash outlay, thousands less. My prior experience with the GFX 100 and 50S lead me to tell you, yes, yes I do. But I'll have to get back to you on that once I have one in hand. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. For all of your website needs, visit www.squarespace.com slash you for a free, no credit card needed trial. And when you're ready to move forward, save 10% by using the discount code HUE at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links down below, picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it. <laughs>